In Dragon Ball Super Episode 66, Zamasu, or at least Zamasu's physical body, is finally defeated. And contrary to popular belief, it was not Goku, it was not Vegeta, it was not even Vegeta who defeated him, it was Future Trunks. Thematically and fitting in line with the story, this really was the best possible outcome having Future Trunks defeat Zamasu slash Goku Black or merge Zamasu. You know, do not forget that this guy murdered Trunks' mother, and the arc is called the Future Trunks arc. Trunks is the star of the show during this period. However, the manner in which Trunks defeats Zamasu with the Spirit Bomb Blade, I believe, is probably the biggest ass pull in all of Dragon Ball. Just an out-of-nowhere moment that has not been set up outside of, you know, Trunks being the one to defeat Zamasu. There's been maybe a couple breadcrumbs about that. But a Spirit Bomb? That has not been, there's been no hints to that. Now, the sword playing a role in Zamasu's defeat we did see the scene of Maki, the little girl, picking up the broken sword in episode 65 of Dragon Ball Super in a scene that was framed in such a way that made it look as though the sword might become relevant in the future, which of course it does in the very next episode. So the very first thing I really want to get into is a common misconception I'm seeing in the Dragon Ball community right now of people not really understanding what is going on with Zamasu why half of him is becoming purple. The fusion is not degrading because of his uh, the fusion between the immortal Zamasu and the mortal Goku Black. What happened was that fusion did uh, ruin the immortality and regeneration of Merge Zamasu to the point where if he sustained incredible damage, he would not be able to fully regenerate it, and that's why his body goes purple. So the first time you see like his face turn purple like that is when he's hit with uh, Super Saiyan Blue Goku's full power god Kamehameha, and it explodes Zamasu's holy wrath in his face. At that point, uh, that inflicted uh, a certain amount of damage that was above a threshold to which Zamasu could recover, thus the reason he became half purple like that. And that's what Goasu tells them before they fuse into Vegito, is we need to inflict damage at that level, and that's our key to beating him. He won't be able to regenerate it. So thus, Goku and Vegeta fuse into Vegito. Now, I believe, I guess this isn't, this could be my own headcanon, but I think Vegito did put enough damage on Zamasu to the point where his, Zamasu's power probably dropped considerably once Trunks got involved after Vegito defused. I believe that the power of Merge Zamasu after Vegito defused was probably much, much lower than Zamasu's power was at the moment Vegito showed up. So knowing this, that might help explain a little bit better why Trunks was able to fight on par with Zamasu. Now, another misconception people have is they think Vegito wasn't really doing too well against Zamasu. Y'all need to get your eyes checked. Vegito dominated the fight with Zamasu in every conceivable way. He only went to the ground one time, and it was a feint so that he could hit Zamasu with the Spirit Sword. Vegito controlled the fight from start to finish. Now, with Zamasu's drop power, then when Trunks comes in, he's able to fight on an equal level, because let's be real, there's no conceivable way, I don't care how many power-ups Trunks gets, he is nowhere near Vegito, it, 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 it's a, it can't be, that they will destroy any previous, uh, you know, logic that's in this show at all, if Trunks is anywhere near Vegito, I don't believe that's the case, I just think Vegito severely weakens Zamasu. Now, a lot of people also have a problem with the fact that Trunks essentially, you know, channeled his inner Kuwabara by using the sword handle and creating, you know, a spirit sword. Very, very similar to what Kuwabara does in Yu Yu Hakusho. But, I mean, we've seen this. A lot of characters in Dragon Ball have had the ability to create these energy blades to the point where it's not such a rare technique that I think Trunks would have any problem doing this. I mean... Really think about it. Trunks is capable of using the Masenko, the uh, Final Flash, the Gallic Gun. I believe in Dragon Ball GT, Trunks uses the, the Kamehameha. Trunks is proven 
it, it, there's no way you can say anything other than Trunks is a prodigy, at the very least on the level of Goku and Vegeta. He is able to learn techniques at a rate that no one else besides, like, uh, Majin Buu was able to do. So, Trunks using the Energy Blade, again, that's not a problem. So, Trunks begins battling Zamasu. You know, he overpowers him with the Energy Blade. Now, it's incredibly unclear why what happens next happens, but the spirit bomb forms from all of the energy from the people around the planet, you know, the Genki Dama. Now, one small problem is, does Android 8 have key? Isn't he an entirely mechanical Android similar to Android 16? And we know that the Androids don't have key, so why did some of his key come and form the Genki Dama? Who knows? That's probably a mistake that they made because the, 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 the producers of Dragon Ball Super, they're not paying that close attention to details, which is a shame, but it's a fact. We have to live with it. So as Trunks is holding Zamasu back and giving an epic speech, I do, I love a lot of the dialogue Trunks is spitting out here. I just love him standing up against Zamasu. It really is so fitting that a spirit bomb made by the people of the planet terrorized by Zamasu and Goku Black is what ultimately defeats him. I love the idea itself. It's just executed so, so poorly. The spirit bomb forms out of nowhere. There's not any explanation or any reason why a spirit bomb would begin formulating. They should have set this up. It would have been so easy. Trunks maybe, you know, he heard about the spirit bomb before. Maybe we could have seen a scene where he asked Goku about it. You guys remember they showed us flashbacks to back in Dragon Ball Z's time to explain some things that happened. Like, remember Bulma pulled Cell's time machine out, and then we saw a, a flashback to right around the time when Trunks left in Dragon Ball Z, but it was new animation, you know, it was a new flashback that they're showing explaining how Bulma got the, the Cell's time machine from Trunks. Now, they could have just given us something either in this episode or in the past about maybe Trunks talking to Goku about the spirit bomb, learning some details of it, maybe them talking about, you know, the energy of this planet could help defeat Zamasu. If Goasu, who apparently, Goasu all of a sudden knows everything. This man couldn't tell Zamasu was evil, despite the fact that Zamasu was basically like, let's kill all mortals forever. But now Goasu knows everything. Goasu couldn't, you know, maybe throw out some lines of dialogue that might give Goku and Trunks the idea. I like the idea, personally, of... Goku forming the spirit bomb and then handing it off over to Trunks, letting Trunks absorb it, similar to the way Goku absorbed it in the Super Android 13 movie, which Trunks basically does do here. But I think the fact that Trunks is the one who formulates it, basically by doing nothing, is a problem. Had Goku formulated it, then Trunks used it, that would have been very, very cool. That absolutely would have been awesome. Clearly, this episode was rushed too too fast. Had they split up, you know, the Vegito fight into its own episode, maybe, you know, an episode... I know people don't want to see another episode where Goku spends the whole time forming a spirit bomb, but it would be sick if Goku's forming a spirit bomb while Trunks is holding off Zamasu. They just... They had so many great ideas, and the execution was just so poor. But at the end of the day, Trunks forms the spirit bomb. Now, another thing people I don't feel like aren't understanding is how is this able to destroy Zamasu when there's not a lot of people left on this world, which we know since, you know, the androids combined with Goku Black has completely decimated this future uh, timeline here. But do not forget, Goku and Vegeta gave what is very safe to assume. I don't think this is a stretch at all. They gave most, if not all, of their energy to Trunks. Again, we saw this before. You know, think of the Brawly movie, for example, where Goku takes in everyone's energy to defeat Brawly. See, what they did for this conclusion is they took a lot of ideas from all the movies and put it together, which I think does work, but there was no setup, thus really diminishing the value of what we're seeing on screen here. So Trunks absorbs the spirit bomb, creates the Spirit Bomb Blade, the Spirit Bomb Sword, which is so incredible. I just wish they had set this up because this should be pure joy, pure elation at a Spirit Bomb Sword. It looks so badass. And Trunks, you know, castrates Zamasu, cuts right through him. Zamasu is going to explode into, like, sparkles, similar to, you know, the Genki Dama Spirit Bomb energy. If only they had set this moment up 
and really given us clues, backstory to it, breadcrumbs. However, if Goku had formulated the spirit bomb, many things could have been done to enhance and make this one of the iconic moments in Dragon Ball. They did drop the ball. It's a cool moment, no doubt. I like that Trunks defeated Zamasu, but at the end of the day, guys, you guys have to agree. You, You can't. They just rushed it too quickly. They should have explained more. Tell me what you guys think. Do you think it was good? Or do you think maybe they shouldn't have just pulled it out of their ass at the last second, right? Maybe a little setup would be good, huh? Come on!